The Story of Champion Honey Bunch Written like all fighting dog stories, it's the dogs that make the story. Which can be added to the accomplishments Honey Bunch has made as a winner. Champion and Producer Honey Bunch is considered the most influential factor in the history of dog fighting. Her incredible ability to produce made her the best producer of all time. I bought Maurice Carver's Honey Bunch in 1972. A five-month-old female. She was very active, Maurice told me to get on the chain. And I did and watched her grow into one of the most beautiful dogs I've ever owned. Honey Bunch was beautiful, super active on the current, and rarely caught standing. She stood like a big show horse, her legs spread wide. Honey Bunch was a great-looking dog, and she was as good as she looked. Over the years, many people have asked questions regarding Honey Bunch's registration, skill, style and general demeanor. I will try to answer some of these questions in this story. Some matches were held in the Carolinas in the mid-70s. There was a pig collection before the matches took place. This show was significant because both the Great Rascal Champion and the Honey Bunch Champion were confiscated in a post-fight seizure. The full story of the rescue of these two great bulldogs will not be told at this time. Both Honey Bunch and Rascal were saved from the wrath of the authorities, and were returned to the pit bulldog environment. The full story of the rescue has been told and will be documented later. Champion Honey Bunch has been matched three times, winning all three. She was conditioned and handled by me in all three fights. I read some ads saying that she was a five-time winner in some old magazines. These ads are sometimes confused with an actual dog record. Many big dogs have been criticized for their ability for one reason or another. No dog man who has ever seen Champion Honey Bunch in action can say that she has cut any slack for any of her opponents. In all of her fights, she took command of the pit word and dominated her opponents. No dog could, or would, get back into the fight after 40 minutes. Honey Bunch was what we called in dogfighting, as a main player. Like Tyson in the boxing world, you might not beat everyone but your opponent better come to fight. One person who can testify to Honey Bunch's bite power is Rex. Rex was the judge for the second Honey Bunch match. He was accidentally bitten by it while ripping it off. Rex was working with a stick when the Honey Bunch bit his thumb. When it looked like the dogs were free, I quickly dodged Honey Bunch from his opponent, when Rex said. Jerry, she's still holding my thumb. It was quite a fight separating these two fast-mouthed females. I didn't realize that Honey Bunch was still attached to Rex's thumb. The old man of the mountain replaced Rex as referee, and the match resumed. Rex, who was the kind of man who wouldn't scream in protest or make a big scene. But in the days that followed, he realized why Hispanics call the thumb the fat finger. A valuable lesson was taught to me by Honey Bunch, when she was still young. A well-known dog man in the area came to my house to test a female. Honey Bunch was 18 months old. I was looking forward to showing off my latest Carver acquisition. I took Honey Bunch off the chain and tested it with an experienced brindle bitch. The tiger grabbed Honey Bunch and started shaking, Honey Bunch just turned her big dark brown eyes to tell me, what's going on? The brindle handler yelled, I'd shoot that bitch, she wouldn't even fight. I was very proud of my dog to resort to something like that. After all it came from the, bold master, and I put it back on her chain. I decided to wait to show it. Honey Bunch has been blessed with the incredible ability to grant her offspring the ability to preform and produce. Honey Bunch was easy to raise, produced large litters of puppies and raised most of them. This feature, the incredible ability to reproduce, made it the greatest producer of all time. Her mating career was started after the poor performance against the previously mentioned brindle female. 
Macho's choices to cross with her also played a big role in her rapid rise to stardom. The excellent selection of Champion B.O., Champion Rascal, and Champion Otis. James Crenshaw along with some older brothers and sisters from Trim Moody and OSO from my house caused a pyramid effect and spread Honey Bunch fame around the world. I bred Honey Bunch to Trim Moody when she came into heat for the second time. Trim took an impressive victory in 56 minutes before mating. During the match, Trim suffered damage to his privates, but came out from under to win. I had tested Trim Moody before this fight. This mating produced only three males and all three became fighting dogs. They were Grand Champion Weehunt, Joker and Bully B.O.B. After Honey Bunch weaned this litter, I tested her again and really liked what I saw. She was as rude as any woman I had ever witnessed. Her test was her first match. She proved her worth by defeating a very good opponent and scratching so hard that if her enemy didn't come face to face, they would be thrown back into the corner wall. I contacted Dr. Kimsey Wood, in an attempt to breed my alternate bitch, to OSO. I asked if he would agree to a choice. OSO was building a reputation, kicking dog ass on the circuit at that time. We put these two together and produced a litter of nine pups but only two males. When it was time to be born. The doctor said, Jerry, I sure as hell would hate to get one of those males, I'd rather get two females. I sent him two bitches who have produced several gameness dogs as well as reputable breeders. Honey Bunch returned to the four walls to win two more impressive battles. The second of these was the departure of Pig Pickin, famous for the Great Apprehension. The opponent in this match was conditioned and handled by Scotty Todd. He was wearing a good black bitch, weighing 17 and a half kilograms. This was a little heavy for our heroine, but I felt like a pound or so wouldn't matter. I was right, she beat her in 28 minutes. One of the pleasures of owning the champion Honey Bunch was the sense of superiority gained from watching it work. She was always the same in all her fights, rolling, controlling, and always dominating her victim. In the mid-70s I decided to sell some of my stock but I didn't want to put the Honey Bunch on the open market. James Crenshaw had a deep interest in the Carver family as did I, he was very devoted and known to be a good dogman. Honey Bunch's struggling days were over, but she was in the prime of her life as a producer. James and I reached an agreement of sale and we both reaped the harvest of the fruits of his great vine to this day. The world of the American game dog has been enhanced by the life of Honey Bunch champion. The canine fraternity will continue to improve as a result of its existence. The increases over their offspring will continue for years to come. The question that has been asked many times, which of the Honey Bunch litters was the best? Which of your descendants was the best? And these questions will still be asked after we are all gone. Crenshaw and I agree on the complexity of this question, even after seeing the results of each litter. My opinion is, how do you, or where do you, find a litter that matches the records of champions Jeep, Charlie and Holly? Eleven wins and no losses were recorded by the trio. Honey Bunch's first litter, however, in which all three males were paired, gained ten and lost only two. The achievements of the great champion Snake cannot be ignored in the search for the best, Otis also produced others of recognition, in this litter. When it comes to the big question, whose son was the best? This really is a difficult situation to know. Crenshaw and I agreed that champion Charlie was a better athlete than the Jeep. But that the Jeep dynasty, it is now in full bloom with the top status and unprecedented 15-point ROM rating and will surely rise higher. The grand champion Weehunt cannot be forgotten either. Although he wasn't an impressive barn invasion type of dog, he always gave me his best, and won six games in a row, in the competition at the time. His first victory was at Crenshaw's house, 
when he faced a five-time winner named Tiger. Tiger was a six-fight veteran at the time. The Florida boys told me that Tiger fought when he was 18 months old. He was caught after putting in a good showing against the older, and arguably better, dog. Tiger won five again and faced Weehint for the seventh time. Weehint took a good beating and came out from under, to win in one hour and twenty-eight minutes. I was once accused of picking a weakness for Weehent when I agreed to match a single winner in volunteer status rather than a double winner in Lowlands. Well, as fate would have it, Weehent defeated the one-time victor, the two-time victor from the Lowlands lost to another two-time victor. Weehent then beat the winner of that match as he sought his fourth triumph. I once won two fights in three weeks when I replaced Weehent with another macho who had evened out with 17 pounds. I matched Weehent at that weight just three weeks earlier. He got lucky and took the Florida participants' DD out of the square in five minutes. Weehent's record was 6-0, but rumor has it he was better in the company of Champion Holly. Champion Holly is among the best bitches I have ever seen and, in my opinion, may be the best offspring of the Honey Bunch. Honey Bunch also produced litters of OSO, Rascal, and Trim Moody. Productive breeders who in turn produced the famous strain. Mountain Man's champion Homer, Snakeman's great champion Pedro, Flim Flam, champion Bubba, champion Sandman. The Sandman was also the grandson of Jeep and Rascal J.R and many more dogs. Every time you open your sporting dog journal, there's a new champion with our star honey bunch in the third, fourth, or fifth generation. And one or two more points added to the Jeep's ROM status. Yes, even the biggest of the big ones is also subject to the possibility of someone entering a false name in a pedigree. The last question I will try to answer in this story is. Okay Maurice, if Honey Bunch was really spawned by a Spanish pointer, could you send me another one just like her? After one of Honey Bunch's impressive wins, I called Maurice to brag about his win. I told Maurice. She sure can bite, he replied. Well, damn it, son, she has a license too. The fame of Honey Bunch would not be as vivid if it weren't for the many contributions of various creators, including Crenshaw and me. The others who were the main breeders of this family were James Garrett, Gene Smith, George Wilcox, M. Stover, and Reese. Along with a number of others who believed in this line and helped to advance this famous dog lineage. Last but not least, the San Antonio Rose, as Don Mayfield called it, the immortal Maurice Carver. It has been said that Honey Bunch could produce dogs as good as a German Shepherd, but I cannot deny or confirm this. I will say. I suspect there will never be another like her. We will continue to breed, and somewhere in the back of our minds, we hope to find a female dog that will fill her collar. In closing, I want to share with you something that happened the other day when I recently visited a local Walmart. I overheard a conversation between two young men, one of whom apparently owned a pit bull and the other a young man who was a friend of an owner. The conversation went something like this. Your friend got good dogs, man. Response. Yeah man, he's got some real rolling stones. Owner. Does he have Debo blood in the blood? Answer. Yeah man, I don't know if I've heard of that or not. Owner. How about Honey Bunch? Answer. Yeah man, I've heard of her. I waved at them as I pushed my loaded shopping cart, with Old Roy as my mind flashed back to the great champion Honey Bunch Rome. 